Gordon Freeman and his crowbar have become nothing short of legends in the last two decades. But they certainly had a lot of help along the way, even though they were always alone in the spotlight. So what would happen if you take away all of their support staff, the guns and the crossbows, the explosives and the weird alien stuff? Would the entire universe end again? Well, that's what I'm here to find out. Today, we will come together on an exciting adventure to determine once and for all, can you beat Half-Life with only a crowbar? Before we get going, let's define this challenge like this. I can only damage enemies with the crowbar. If I use any other weapon, I fail the challenge. However, destroying objects with guns is fine if there's no other way around it and as long as no enemy takes damage through their destruction. Two. One. The whole thing started off smooth. I caught myself socializing with my buds, checking out the vending machines, hanging out in the locker rooms, stuff like that. Felt like just another day at work, really. Well, it did until I accidentally caused the end of the world. In total, it took me about 25 minutes to even grab the crowbar in the first place. And from that point onwards, Things became very different. I had to actually fight things all of a sudden. A full minute after getting it, I died to one of the first enemies in the game. And trust me when I tell you, this was certainly not the last time this happened. Even though I often died every 5 seconds, I slid through the first few chapters pretty easily. Fighting things like head cramps, head crab zombies, Alien doggos and star-nosed aliens has never felt so satisfying. And it allowed me to appreciate Half-Life for what it truly is. I could see all of its beauty up close and personal. Playing with a crowbar is fun, I thought. Life became more difficult when my enemies started attacking me with fully automatic machine guns while I was still running after them like a madman with a crowbar. All was certainly not fun in games. See, there was a little problem. I would have liked to title this chapter THE problem, but there wasn't just one. Let's call this one Problem A. When I first got the idea for this challenge, my biggest fear was always range. Honestly, if there was a section in the game where you had to shoot a sniper down from the top of a building, then all of this would have instantly been for nothing. Half-Life was not that mean, but instead, they gave me a room with about a dozen fully armed soldiers just itching to blow me the hell into oblivion. And believe me, I tried. I really, really did. I hung around this section for at least an hour and a half, in which I must have died hundreds of times. Fighting them was about as fruitful as posting a selfie on Twitter and hoping that someone comes sliding into your DMs. Running around them could have worked if I'd had another 5 hours of patience left, but I just wasn't about that life. After resetting and exploring any opportunity that came to my mind, I had to resort to what I once relentlessly shunned. Guys, I slaughtered all of them like they had slaughtered me in the 90 minutes before. I'm not gonna lie, it felt good satisfying. I was finally able to... Well, you guys know that's not actually what happened. The way you usually have to go is to go through the left pathway, continue on through to the room with every single Half-Life soldier in existence, and do some very specific task there. Then you'd activate this little train card and drive your way through a concrete barricade to freedom. Now, since that path was a dead end for me, I couldn't do that. Instead, I wanted to go straight for the barricade. After thinking long and hard of a solution, meditating on the problem for what must have been weeks, and utilizing a little known tool called Google, I figured out a way to get over the barricade without having to fight an entire army with just a crowbar. 
I collected as many trip mines as I could find, stuck them onto the concrete in highly calculated positions and angles, climbed on top of them one after the other, and jumped my way to victory. This solved one of my problems, but instantly created the next one. If you're not familiar with Chapter 8 of Half-Life, then let me fill you in. Its title, On the Rail, is exactly what the chapter is all about. You drive along on one of these little train cars for almost the entire time. Now, because I essentially skipped the previous chapter and hopped the wall without Donald's approval, you are a rude, terrible person. I also did not have the privilege to own one of these vehicles. Let me tell you, that's a 2 out of 10, cannot recommend if I've ever seen one. I had to fight, not only the enemies and the slowness of walking through an entire subway system, but also the electric railway that gave me a solid 10 HP of damage every time I hit my small toe on it. Life was a limited commodity, so I had to be extra careful the entire time. On the Rail was definitely one of the most difficult chapters in the game. I could probably fill half of this video with just the problems that I faced in it, but I'll cut it a bit shorter for you. While I was fighting my way through the chapter without a card, I was faced with a difficult decision. A new card revealed itself, but I had to endure some difficult fights to get it to work. I decided against the card and vagabonded my way onwards. Eventually, however, my decision came back to haunt me. I came upon an elevator that needed a card to be used. The only other way forward was through a second elevator that was completely blocked by explosive crates. Great. Now, I had exactly two options. I could blow the crates up, which would also kill the enemy next to it, and therefore invalidate this entire challenge. Or I could go back, fight enemy after enemy to release the card and bathe in pure gold as a reward. Of course, there was only one right answer to this question, and looking back on it, I probably should have just blown up the entire thing. The complete tragedy of my existence can be summed up in this medium-sized room. I'll spare you the grimy details, this thing was pretty disgusting. Quite frankly, I was certain that there was no way on God's green earth that I would hit this switch without killing these guys first, but then this happened. Let me hit you with some rapid fire problems. I could probably go through the entire alphabet, so let's make some progress. Later on in chapter 8, I reached the rocket pit and was stuck against these three mercenaries. I died a lot here while constantly jumping around and trying to figure out how I could get them to miss all of their shots. Eventually, I hid behind this corner which led to them blowing each other up, which in turn allowed me to slip past them without dying again. In the next chapter, I had an even worse problem. I couldn't figure out where to go. Seriously, this underwater section was just too much for me. After swimming around for countless minutes, I had to get assistance from my old buddy Google again. We just come to make sure your baby's okay. <laughs> Hold up, this guy doesn't even know how to play through Half-Life on his own. LMAO, get lost, loser. Hey, I said I would do a no weapons run. Nobody said anything about a no run. This next one is probably one of my favorite obstacles that I had to overcome. Towards the end of chapter 10, my only way forward was through this small tunnel. It had a trip mine lodged right in the middle of it. Now, I don't know if you know that, but explosions kinda kill you. At face value, this certainly looked like a dead end for my challenge. However, I was able to elegantly figure out that you can actually jump over the laser if you time it correctly. If you reach a point where you do more... <laughs> oh, did you see that? Did you see that, folks? Did you just... Let me do all the saves I can do, man. <laughs> oh, that was good. Okay. As you can see, almost all of the later chapters feature at least one problem that first seemed like it would stop me dead in my tracks. The same thing can also be said about chapter 11. Boy, this one really was a pain in my crowbar. The first problem I had here was this. 
I had to destroy these pillars up there in order to proceed. Now how the hell are you supposed to do that with a crowbar, you might ask? I tried jumping on top of the structures, but there were invisible walls around it that keep you away from them. I tried finding an alternate route, but all of my attempts were futile. Suddenly, I realized something amazing. Yes? <gasps> Did you see that? Wait. Every... Wow. You can destroy all of the pillars by simply blowing up the trip mines. I could feel it. This is the way. So, I lured one of the soldiers into them and sneaked past all the chaos going on. Now let's talk about the biggest problem in the run. These crates blocking the only path to the next chapter. And as if that wasn't enough, there was also a guy and two automatic turrets that kept shooting at me. Man, I tried so many things to get these things out of my way. I tried to make the turrets explode them, but kept dying from the blast. I tried having the soldier throw a grenade towards me, but he absolutely could not manage to throw them into the tunnel. I even tried recruiting a local security guard named Frank to push him in front of the crates in order to get the turrets to target him, but he instead started fighting them and died. Good. Good. Oh no, Frank, this is not going- Yes! Oh, I thought- I did the same with a scientist and even with a giant alien, but neither of them managed to solve my problem. Had I still had some trip mines, I possibly could have climbed over the crates with their help, but even though I searched everywhere to get some, I just couldn't find any. Therefore, I had to do the unthinkable. I shot the crates. Well, at least I haven't shot any enemies yet. Chapter 12 was one of the toughest parts of the game when it comes to all-out survival. The reason for that is its openness. I had to scale along a mountain while enemies were constantly shooting me from above, below and in front of me. I've probably never used the quick save function this much before playing this chapter. Slowly but surely, I kept advancing my save points in a way that would also leave me with a relatively high number of HP. I say relatively because by the end, I had about 2 HP left. Therefore, climbing this ladder with the helicopter shooting at me seemed like a lost cause, but through my research of some Half-Life speedruns, I managed to speed climb my way to safety. Yes? Okay, that's quick. Did you see that? Oh, that was good. 2 HP. Alright, I know this is getting pretty long, so let me hit you with the three most important parts of the run. The third most intense fight in the game came against these alien grunts. I had to endure against five of them and the worst part was that I had to kill them all in order to continue. They could pretty much kill me with one or two hits, so I needed to be pretty flawless here. After about half an hour of one-on-one -on -one fights, I was allowed to go on with my life. Thank goodness. The second to last boss in the game was a walking sack of balls. Yeah, you heard me right. I literally had to smack a pair of balls to get through here. Now I have to thank Valve at this point. I would have never, ever, ever been able to beat this fella if it wasn't for these healing pawns lying around everywhere. Seriously, I probably had to heal myself two dozen times in this fight alone. Also, I had a really solid strategy for most of it. At first, I kept jumping inside of the spider balls and clopped him from there with my crowbar. However, after the first third of the fight, that didn't work anymore, so I resorted to long jumping through him, hitting him once or twice in the process and then doing it over and over again. This fight dragged itself out for a good while, but a full hour after I first laid eyes upon Balls McGee, I had him beat. Now, I might as well call this problem XYZ because it took me longer than any other in the entirety of Half-Life. Oh yes, you know what this is about. A giant alien baby. 
This is the final boss of Half-Life and oh my god, this fight was not created with crowbar lunatics in mind. It took me an entire livestream to beat this thing into oblivion and even they didn't want it so I had to kind of just knock it into space. Going over this entire fight in detail would probably raise my pulse to about 250 beats per minute so I won't do that. Basically, this is what happened. I tried to fight this thing in the legitest way possible, flying as high as I could to hit the yellow crystals with my crowbar while simultaneously dodging the baby's electro balls. This took so long and it kept getting worse because the later two crystals were a lot higher, so there were often many more steps involved to even get to them. After destroying two out of three crystals, an angel descended from the sky and gave me some advice. I once saw someone kill this boss with a crowbar but he never hit him. He simply circled under him. I took to the angel's calling and got to work. As if by magic, the devilish baby started appearing distraught. Its power was obviously starting to fade. When the opportunity finally presented itself, I rose to the occasion and jumped on top of his giant head to deliver the killing blow. Don't get me wrong guys, even with the angel's strategy, it still took me another full hour to kill the boss. But I didn't care anymore. This was it. Yes. All of the problems, yes. the shortcomings and deaths, all of the friends that I lost along the way. Was this worth it? Just to beat Half-Life? With nothing but a crowbar? Well, I don't know. But I do know that there was still one thing that I couldn't shake. The crates in chapter 12. This was the only thing in the entire game for which I had to use a gun. I went back to the place that was still bound to my failure. Again, an angel appeared before my very eyes. Mine's in the lab. Near Cutter. It was a cryptic message, to say the least. But I figured that lab was a reference to the room with the aforementioned pillars. Indeed, there were laser mines to be found here. I must have missed them the first time around. Or maybe, just maybe, the angel found a liking to me and placed them there deliberately. I, I will never know for certain. As I approached the crates, I took out the soldier and sprinted towards them with incomparable speed. I placed the mine as quickly as I could and used it as a stepping stone towards an unquestionable victory. P wonderful. That, that's just wonderful, man. So, with all of that out of no, the way, no. <laughs> let us return to the question at hand. Can you beat Half-Life with only a crowbar? Yes, you can.